Ah, CBN, CBN, the sleepy cannabinoid, sleepy. the Rip Van Winkle Rip of Van weed, Winkle. the nap in non-appearance, as in you not appearing for work because you took too much CBN the night before. With all the sleep products we're seeing on the market, you're probably wondering, is CBN truly the perfect companion to your insomnia? Is it the safe and natural alternative to benzos and hypnotics? Is it the ultimate solution to your nightly dates with that 70s show reruns? Well, let's discuss. Hey everyone, and welcome to another Can I Kick It video. Today we're going to be talking about cannabinol or CBN. This cannabinoid, like many others, is found in the cannabis plant, but has just started to be utilized in cannabis products. You've probably seen it at your local dispensary or alternative THC shop, and it's usually advertised as a product that helps induce sleep in users. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the research behind CBN and sleep, as well as some of its other properties. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first, let's start with the basics. Now, as I mentioned before, CBN is found in cannabis, but usually in very little amounts. However, if the THC is exposed to UV light or oxygen, then over time, THC will convert to CBN in a process called oxidation. Due to this oxidation, older flour tends to have a higher concentration of CBN than fresh flour. Now, interesting fact, in 2019, ancient pots, that's pots, not pot, from Chinese tombs were discovered and actually revealed early use of cannabis. They found that the plant material in the pots contained CBN, indicating that the original fresh and non-oxidized plants contained THC as the major phytocannabinoid constituent. Now along with this, CBN's discovery is extremely significant as it was the first cannabis compound to be isolated from an extract at the turn of the 19th century. In the 1930s, it was the first cannabis compound to have its structure determined by R.S. Kahn and in 1940, the first to be chemically synthesized by Roger Adam. I mean, this chemical goes way back, but enough about history, let's get into the effects. And this is where it gets interesting. So there's really two sides to this coin, what science says and what users say. And both are quite different from each other. So in an effort to make an unbiased video, I'm gonna talk about what the science says and then talk about what real users are saying. And I do urge you to listen to both sides because they are equally valuable. So let's start with the science. Now, many products on the market tout CBN as great for sleep or rather sedative. However, this has not yet been proven in studies. In fact, many researchers don't think that CBN is particularly sedating at all. In Cannabidol and Sleep Separating Fact from Fiction, author Jamie Caroon examined studies involving administered CBN dating all the way back to the 1970s. The conclusion? Well, there aren't many studies assessing CBN's effects associated with sleep, such as sedation or fatigue. Most importantly, the author couldn't find any published clinical trials investigating associations between CBN and validated sleep questionnaires. This basically means that a lot of studies weren't actually measuring what they intended to. Now, the nine studies that were valid showed that CBN didn't really have a sedative effect at all. For example, a 1980 study was conducted with 161 individuals. The subjects were orally given a dose of CBN based on their body weight. Now, for the average size adult, that's about 25 milligrams. The participants were then subjected to a series of cognitive, perception, reaction time, and motor function tests. And the results? The authors concluded that CBN did not have an effect on the parameters they tested. Now, a case can be made that since a lot of the products we see are paired with THC, maybe CBN only exhibits sedative properties when paired with it. Well, in that same study, researchers actually did give some participants CBN and THC, and the conclusions were about the same. CBN with THC didn't have any differentiating effects when compared to THC alone. Now, another study dating all the way back to 1975, in which 20 milligrams of THC was either combined with a placebo, 40 milligram doses of CBN, or 40 milligrams of CBD, and given to participants. The researchers found that the combination of THC and CBN produced no detectable changes in the quality, intensity, or duration of the effects of THC. In other words, an entire 40 milligrams of CBN did nothing to subjects. And furthermore, 40 milligrams is a lot more than what you would see in typical cannabis products. So if there isn't a correlation between CBN and sedation, what other effects can we expect? And is CBN particularly psychoactive at all? 
So paging back to that cannabinol factor fiction paper, the author asserts that evidence demonstrating that CBN elicits cannabis-like effects in humans is pretty mixed, with the majority of available evidence demonstrating a lack of such an effect. For example, there was a study conducted in 1984 in which volunteers were given 1,200 milligrams of CBN. Researchers found that the cannabinoid did not induce significant dose-related physiologic effects and didn't even increase the heart rate of participants. Now, I should mention that this study was conducted with experienced marijuana smokers. Now, CBN does have an affinity, albeit an extremely low one, to the CB1 receptor of the body's endocannabinoid system. This is the receptor responsible for producing the psychoactive effects from cannabis. Now, because of this affinity, it is true that CBN is at least slightly psychoactive, but based on these studies, you'd have to take an extremely high dose, at least orally, to notice it. Also, THC has a much higher affinity for the CB1 receptor, so if you take both, THC would most likely vastly outcompete the CBN for receptor binding. All right, so that's the science part of this. And with only nine valid studies, the results aren't very concrete. Furthermore, you'll notice a lot of these studies are decades old. And though age should not be a determining factor in assessing a study, it certainly doesn't bode well for modern corroboration. In addition, most of these studies involved oral consumption, so there's little information on inhalation. Also, some studies had like under 15 participants, which is just not enough to make conclusions. Now, there are far more things that I can pick apart with these studies, but for the sake of time, let's move on. So now let's focus on actual user experiences. And though this data hasn't been validated like studies have, there is far more information that you're gonna find on forums and other online communities where users have tried this cannabinoid and shared their experiences. So what do actual users say about CBN and sleep? Now, most users agree that it can be great for sleep with a high enough dose or when paired with other cannabinoids like CBD or Delta-8 THC. Some users even claim that it has been life-changing for them and a great alternative to sleep aids. People report having an easier time falling asleep, staying asleep, and they don't wake up groggy in the morning. Also, as far as psychoactive effects go, users say that if you take a lot, even without THC, you will get high and you will be couch locked for most of the night. They've also said that CBN tends to last longer than THC, so keep that in mind. So look, this was just some Googling I did with the only corroboration being posts of people saying, hey, same here, or hey, I had a similar experience. But it's clear that users have a vastly different experience on CBN than what research has shown. Science says one thing, but it's hard to ignore all these user accounts. And though I think that cannabinoid communities we see online can sometimes act like echo chambers, where the same opinions are bounced around, I do think that there's a lot of beneficial information you can take away. Now, it goes without saying that I'm in no way advising you to trust what you read online. In fact, you shouldn't trust me either. Always do your own research before buying and consuming at your own risk. And with that, thank you guys so much for sticking around. I hope that this has been helpful. If you have any comments or suggestions, please drop them below. Have a good one.